Hey, what's up YouTube? Jake Young here. So, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you put the bell notification on just to inform you guys of any new videos um, that I'll be posting. Um, like I said in one of the first videos, I'm trying to do um, about a video a week. Thanks to this uh, glorious quarantine that I'm under, um, I'm able to pump out quite a lot more than what I thought I was going to be able to. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about restringing your guitar. Um, it's super easy. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Obviously, there are a couple different guitars out there as far as bridge systems and stuff like this. Um, but today, we're going to be doing um, any guitar that has like a stop tail or a Les Paul style bridge system with stop tail, okay? Um, so for today, what I'm going to be restringing is my 2017 Gibson Les Paul Traditional. You guys have seen this in a previous video. If you have not, go ahead and uh, check that video out after you're done with this uh, little instruction right here. I'll have the link down below. So, some equipment you're gonna need. Obviously, your guitar. You're going to need a set of strings. So right here, I have a three pack of Ernie Ball regular slinkies. I love the 10 through 46. Um, I'm either playing these or I occasionally put super slinkies on. Um, it just depends. But right now we're doing 10 through 46 super or regular slinkies. You're going to need some sort of guitar winder. Okay. Now these guitar winders, you can find them at any of your local music stores. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive, you know, maybe four or five bucks. Um, and they're just real convenient when you're going to restring your guitar. Um, if you do not have a string winder, um, at least try to find around your house. I'm sure that everybody's mom or dad, or you might have a tool, random toolbox laying around or something. Try to find some wire cutters because it makes it really convenient when you're cutting off the ends of the strings, okay? Um, so that's only if you don't have a string winder. If you have a string winder, the best part about these is so I have my string winder part right up top that goes uh, onto the tuning pegs. And then on the other end, I've got a little spot where I can cut the excess strings off. Now, if you want to completely take all the strings off, that is completely fine. Uh, for this video, all I'm gonna be doing is one at a time and just showing you a little trick on how I actually, you know, restring and kind of lock my strings into place. But if you do decide to take all of your strings off, you guys can get some fretboard cleaner. Um, so what I have here is some Deodario Hydrate. Um, pretty much all it is is just lemon oil. Um, you go to, once again, any of your local shops, find any kind of fretboard conditioner, and I think it's only gonna set you back a couple bucks. Um, if they don't have it at a local music shop, you can always go to a hardware store, find some lemon oil, and you'll be good to go. Um, also with the body of the guitar, um, any kind of polish. I don't know where I got this from and it's pretty full, so I don't ever use it. Uh, but all it is is uh, pump polish for the body of your guitar. Um, if you want to go ahead and shine up your guitar every time you change strings, by all means, um, I don't really ever do it. I just, you know, get all the dirt and grime off that I can without having to do that. Um, most of my guitars when I'm not gigging are usually in the case, so I don't usually have a whole lot of dirt and grime. Um, one last little thing you might need, um, paint brushes always come in handy. Uh, this is just a clean paintbrush. Um, any of those little nooks and crannies that you have that like dust can get into, for instance, like your tunematic bridges, um, underneath the pickups, anything where dust can accumulate, um, paintbrush really helps to just sweep that out real quick and clean everything out. So that's uh, last thing, you're gonna need a tuner. Um, I prefer to just grab my Polytune Mini right off my board. Um, it's a lot more accurate than the headstock tuners that most uh, some of the people I see playing around town use. Um, there's nothing wrong with headstock tuners. I just like this Polytune Mini. It's very accurate, and um, especially when I'm doing any kind of intonation, which we'll briefly talk about at the end of this video once we get everything tuned up. So, like I said, the uh, main reason I'm not going to take off all these strings right now is because if you've ever seen a Gibson style guitar with this stop tail and then your tunematic bridge, if I take all the strings off, these will come off. Um, it's not really that big of a deal. The only issue that will ever happen is if these screws that are holding your stop tail or the bridge in place, if they move, 
you're going to have to do a little bit of adjustments. I don't really want to do an adjustment right now. Right now, this guitar is set up really nicely, so I'm just going to change the strings, double check the intonation, and everything should be just fine. So, we will start by taking, clearing off our workstation a little bit of all the stuff that I showed you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my pack of strings, which once again, I bought a three pack, which I always buy the three pack of the Ernie Ball regular slinkies or super slinkies. So three of these come in this box. Pretty much this is your 46 through 10. Everything that I need is right inside of that little packaging. And I've got three sets of strings now that I can use. So I'm gonna start at the E string and then work my way to the low E string all the way down to the high E string, okay? So when doing this, all you're gonna do is grab that string winder, place it on the back right here where that tuning peg is, and you are going to go clockwise. You're gonna loosen that up until that string is nice and loose. You can go ahead and cut that string. I prefer to cut it down here between the two pickups and I take the string off. At this point in time, this right here, make sure you secure them some way to where they're not gonna be flying all over the place. I just like to wrap them on themselves. Um, reason being is, especially on the smaller strings, nothing worse than them getting caught in your carpet. Next thing you know, you're vacuuming and then your vacuum freaks out because it's got a string stuck inside of it. So just find a place for all these uh, excess strings, put them somewhere, so they're not in the way and you know where they're at so you can pick them up later. Taking out your next string, unwind it. On most of the Gibson style stop tails, you got those nice little holes back here. Each string is gonna feed through that. Once it feeds through that, it's going to rest on the saddle right here on the bridge and then you're going to feed it up to the headstock. So like I said, goes through the stop tail, over the saddle, and I feed it up to the headstock. Now before I start feeding this in, your tuning pegs have little holes inside of them. Whenever I do this, I like to make sure that they are properly aligned with the neck. And I feed that string all the way through and I pull it nice and tight. Now, once I've done this, what I see a lot of people when I used to teach guitar lessons and stuff, they would have ungodly amounts of wrap um, on their tuning pegs. So to eliminate that, all I'm gonna do is stretch that string out as tight as it goes. I'm gonna start at the nut. I'm gonna pull that string all the way back just a little past the first fret on your guitar. Once I have that excess, I'm going to hold my excess in place, lift this up. I'm gonna wrap on the outside of my tuning peg and then lift this up. From there, I'm gonna take my string winder and go counterclockwise. Until the string is tight. So essentially what I've just done is locked that string into place, all right? Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. This is the way that I like to do it. Um, it's real simple and effective and it's never let me down. So now that I have this excess right here, all I'm going to do is clip it off. And I'm going to repeat the process for the remaining five strings. So I'll walk you through it again with our A string this time. So I'm gonna take my string winder, go clockwise and loosen the strings.
String is nice and loose. I can go ahead and cut that now. Take off the old string, wrap it on itself or however you want to do it, just to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere crazy. Once again, it doesn't get uh, caught in your carpet. It's a good way to piss off your significant other, or if you're still living with your parents, your mom or dad or whatever, breaking their vacuum with some old guitar strings. So same thing as before, I'm going from the stop tail through the back of it with the holes, going up to the bridge, placing it on the saddle, and then up to the headstock. Last thing I need to do before I start feeding this through, once again, that little hole in your tuning peg, make sure you align it with the neck so everything comes through nicely and you don't have any kinks in that string. Pull it completely tight, grab at the nut, pull that string all the way back to the first fret, hold on to the excess, grab it, wrap on the outside of the tuning peg, lift that excess up, and start to go counterclockwise. Once the string is nice and tight, you can go ahead and clip off the excess. So repeat this process throughout the rest of the strings and your guitar is restrung and good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that real quick. So everything is restrung. All the strings are good. Um, last thing we need to do is just go ahead and tune this thing up and we will talk about some other little tricks. <clears throat> One thing I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I recently just acquired some of these Ernie Ball, uh, I believe they're called flat ribbon uh, patch cables. Um, they are freaking amazing using them on my pedal board. Um, they're super great. Um, I was a little hesitant when I first bought them cause I'm not a huge fan of, um, these longer patch cables cause they tend to get in the way and usually they're not long enough, um, or too, too long. There's no like happy in between. Um, but I bought the, this is the 12 inch one. It's really awesome. And I also bought the six inch ones. Those are great too. Um, highly recommend if you're looking for a freaking awesome patch cable, check out some of these Ernie Ball flat ribbon patch cables. All right, so now I'm gonna tune this thing up and we're gonna go with a little trick. All right, so we're all tuned up and we are good to go. Um, if you've ever put new strings on a guitar and you're kind of a beginner, one of the things um, you probably ran into is the thing will not stay in tune. It takes a few days for it to like actually stay in tune. I'm going to show you a little trick. I can't remember who taught me this, um, but it's super simple. All you're going to do is grab each string and you're going to pull up on it and kind of wiggle it around. Go to like the third fret, do the same thing. 
and just keep wiggling this string around. What you're doing is you're pulling out all of the little slack that possibly happened while you were tuning this thing up. And that is why your guitar is not staying in tune. So putting a little bit of pressure, grabbing these strings and just kind of pulling them back and forth. Obviously you don't want to do it too hard. If you do, you'll end up breaking a string. So just do that a couple times with each string. And then bring it back up to pitch. Once you've brought it back up to pitch, if you want to do that a couple more times just to be on the safe side, by all means, um, usually I do it once and I'm good to go. Um, I've done this right before gigs, set up my guitar all nice, got some fresh strings on it, and then do that little trick of grabbing the strings and just rocking them back and forth a little bit, and it's been good to go. Um, so... As far as any more on the setup goes, I don't want to dive too deep into that. I'm pretty sure I'll do that for another video as far as the setup of your guitar. Um, I'll probably do it on multiple different styles. So a Strat style, um, a Les Paul style, maybe something weird. Um, I don't have any Floyd Roses, so don't expect anything like that. Um, but yeah, we'll get we'll dive into the setup and whatnot here in a, in a later video. So if you guys enjoyed the video, once again, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, links down below for uh, my other videos on this guitar itself. And last thing, I need to shout out. So on my shirt right now, I've got Definition. So my friend, his name is Evan Geraci. You can find him on Facebook at Definition. I'll have the link down in the description. He is an amazing spoken word artist and a poet. He just absolutely uh, released a book that's on Amazon of his poetry. I'll have that link in the description as well. So thanks guys. Hope you guys have a good day. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys on the next video.